Hello everyone, this is Unit 13 here on scene at the Homestead. I'm going to do a quick video here about this Bass Pro Eclipse six-man cabin tent. It has four metal shock corded stakes, two shock corded or bungeed uh, fiberglass stakes or stakes. I just said stakes. I meant poles. It's four steel poles, one for each corner here, and then two, and you can see that dome shape up there on the top, or arch, that comes from the two fiberglass poles that go up there. Go over a quick modification that I did here. There is a ingress and egress for either hot or air-conditioned air. That way these tents can be used in different climates. And then I'll go over some of the interior modifications that I did to the tent. Um, let's see, it takes 13 stakes to set this tent to the ground. There are six stakes for the uh, tent base itself for the actual tent. And then the fly here has a seven. Um, guy lines that come off of it to help hold this tent down. There's also, in addition to the uh, poles, there's another fiberglass pole that holds this, ri oops, this ridge right here in place and out over the uh, door of the tent. I'm going to show you the stakes that we use here in the sand in Florida. It probably takes about 20 minutes to set this tent up by yourself using these kind of stakes. I use an impact driver to get those things into the ground. Otherwise it take probably 45 minutes to set that up using a, <laughs> just doing anything by hand, I'll just put it that way. So I'm gonna walk around to the side here. Here we can see these guy lines coming off of that fly. And then those additional stakes that are, there's the four here on the corner. And then a dog's gotta be in the scene there. And then <laughs> there's one of those stakes there. Walk around to the back here. There's the guy lines coming off the back supporting that there's really not much to talk about here okay I'm gonna stop this and gonna go in okay I'm inside the tent here let's go over a couple of the modifications that I made on the interior I made some vinyl windows for this that way if I am going to air condition or heat this thing it'll hold the heat in but I'll still be able to look outside and see what's going on out there. I only did it to these three, this three sections here, uh, but not the door. There's a window that goes across the door. I didn't want to, want to mess with that, around with that. And then there's also these um, net sections up here that's got the mosquito net in it. I also did those as well. The glass is on, or the glass, the vinyl's on the outside of those. That way, you have to put a support here. And it wouldn't sag on the interior. It just lays across that mesh. And there's, there's plenty of space here. I'm going to back out a little bit. Plenty of space here inside this tent. Um, I've got them really set aside as individual quarters. The 9 by 10 foot floor. Um, footprint there is really just about the size of a small room so you could set up a I don't I don't use cots I like I'd rather just sleep right on the ground and then put my padding down here I'm much much more comfortable with that and then uh, you could put a cot or your bed roll down in here and then in this section here it's big enough you could put various tables. You could even set up like a small seating area if you wanted to sit up in an actual chair or something like that. But there's, it's, 
it's big enough you could put one of those larger roll-up roll tables in here. Sorry I didn't put any of that stuff in here, but it's 9 by 10 You can figure out whether your stuff will fit or not in there. Same thing for over here. I'm going to go inside real quick here. Go back and focus here. So this whole section here, I don't count on putting anything in here except for the either a heater or air conditioning units or venting, whatever, however the setup is at the time. It could be one of those portable air conditioners or it could be something that's that's run on the exterior into the interior here. Either way, I just reserve that. And then the other thing I forgot to do when I was had these under the sewing machine is I wanted to put a couple more Velcro tabs in this area. There's one right there. That way I could run an ex extension cord. Put an eagle down. An extension cord all the way up through here to this section and then run light fixtures or w whatever I wanted to up here at this top section. But I think there's enough. It's probably the cord will droop a little bit, but I think between that little tab there and then the Velcro down here, I think that that will probably work. If I get in the mood one of these days, I'll also some more tabs up and through here or pipe possibly like a Velcro or not a Velcro, but a tube of fabric. The cord can be run down all the way the entire length. That way it just lays inside there and it, it won't won't droop down at all. All right, and then well, I don't think I talked about this. These, this, this is designed so that if I want to take this down quickly, those can just be taken off, and then we can switch right over to just using the vented windows there. That's why I did that Velcro system. That way. Because if it's a nice fall evening and you want a good breeze in there, there's no need for air conditioner or heater. Might as well use those vented windows. Okay, I'll talk a moment about the tent setup. This section of video here has been consolidated down from about 21 and a half minutes. But that's all it takes for one person to set it up. First we start off with the poles. There's the two fiberglass ones at the top. There are the four steel ones down below there. And then the support that goes across the front of the tent fly over the door. Each of those four steel poles goes into this little metal peg that's connected by webbing to the floor of the tent. And then once the cross member fiberglass poles are in place the next step is to put the steel poles into these angled pieces here that are on each each of the corners of the tent the reason I'm showing this photo here is it has that 140 degree marking on it that's the side that the steel poles goes into the other end of that little plastic thing there is actually too small. So there, there's a, a, a large opening and a small opening. The small opening is for the fiberglass poles. The large opening marked 140 degrees is for the steel poles. And if you watch this little section of video here you can see that it doesn't take much to set it up. It was a little warm today and I wasn't trying to move fast also I was filming the process which slowed things down but I would say a good 15 or 20 minutes without interruption will have this tent set up uh, very quickly there. There's really not a whole lot to talk about um... I'm pretty satisfied with this tent so far. I haven't weathered a heavy storm in it, but I've had it set up out here before I did any modifications in some mild storms, and it didn't leak, but I'm anticipating that it would under heavy rain. However, it's a nice little tent for the price. 
and it would be really great just individual quarters set up you could put two people in there comfortably it's supposed to be six man that's if they're you're not using utilizing that floor space for anything else but I uh, would rather just keep these as individual quarters under the circumstances or maybe double up but that'd be the most people I'd try to stick into this thing maybe use one of those uh, bunk beds uh, cot bunk bed systems in here might work pretty good for a couple of people but other than that uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else to add to this video I know that when I tested the air conditioner in here if I don't have that, I've got one of those single hose portable air conditioners. If I don't have uh, part of that single hose air conditioner turned into a double hose, it'll, it'll start just collapsing the tent trying to suck air into it. It's pretty amazing to watch. I forgot to videotape it, but it's amazing to watch this, this tent, the floor and everything just start, just vacuum itself into the middle there. All right, uh, let's see. I think that's all for this little video. This is Unit 13, I'm out. Unit 3, Rescue 4, Seizure 711, West College Street, crosses Pasadena Freeway. Boat 1, Engine 40, Boat 2, Rescue 848, to the injury 389, Terminal Way.